The original Plants vs. Zombies was a masterpiece. I remember that I was still a freshman in high school when this was released, and now I'm already working and I'm still playing it because it's fun and challenging. For this video, I'll talk about Last Stand Endless, which is a game in puzzle mode. And I'll try out the fire and ice strategy to see if it's really working. The link is in the description if you'd like to read more about it. But first, let me show you what it looks like in full action. And then later on, I'll show you how to build it up from scratch. That was hot and cold. If you notice, I'm at flag 37 on this stage. The setup took 31 flags to complete, and here's how I did it. For easier consumption, I'll be discussing it in three phases. Phase 1 is from flag 1 to 10, where you build the foundations. Phase 2 is from flag 11 to 20, where you fill in the gaps. And phase 3 is from flags 21 to 31, where you maximize the coverage. The game is at its easiest during the first few flags, so that's where you would like to build your most expensive plants and also the ones that take up the most um, slot space. So I'd like to start out by uh, planting the cob cannons. Aside from they're the most expensive, they're also the most um, useful because they would provide the coverage that your remaining plants could not afford to give while building the rest of it. I would also want to make sure that the shrooms, since they require like the coffee bean for them to function, I make sure that all of them are already set up because I need three slot spaces for other plants in the next um, levels, if that makes sense. As for the other lanes, I just want to make sure that I have a hard hitter in place and use as much of the sun as I can efficiently and effectively. The foundation work continues in flag 2, so what I do is I get rid of the items that I won't need for now, such as the cob cannons and the shrooms, which is like five plants already and then i'll insert the components to take their place which is the cattails the upgrades the umbrella leaf and i'm not sure why i picked the cherry bomb but there it is my rhythm is to first set up the base plants then upgrade and then protect them with pumpkins as what i'm doing with the cattails right now I was thinking of fire 
last flag and I realized that I was supposed to pick up Torchwood but anyway I couldn't afford it so no harm done so here it is and if you notice I'm supposed to earn 500 sun only but I have 625 the reason being is I used my cob cannons and they actually reward you coins diamonds or in some cases sun if used properly no changes in the plant selection and what I'm trying to do here is to set up my fire lanes as well as give them protection because they are placed in an awkward tile and quite exposed. There, that should be enough. Let me also add an umbrella leaf while we're at it. Flag 5 is where I establish my ice lanes as well as the coverage against bungee zombies for columns 1 to 3. Notice how I plan ahead. Better safe than sorry. I do something similar in Flag 6 where I apply it on the pool as well as columns 4, 5, and 6. Again, better safe than sorry. Flag 7 is where I protect my frontliners which are Torchwoods and Umbrella Leaves as well as upgrade my fire lanes, one of them at least. Flag 8 is where I upgrade the rest of my fire lanes as well as um, replace those torn up pumpkins. You'd like to be proactive with this because if not, you'll have to sacrifice a seed slot for it later on. The presence of the football zombie triggered two things. One, the replacement of the umbrella leaf with the cherry bomb and two, pumpkin time. By Flag 9, my base, fire, and ice lanes are complete, so I have to protect them. Pumpkin time. Flag 10 is where we see the arrival of the notorious jack-in-the-box zombies. And this is where we would like to be strategic with our cob cannons, using them as a trigger to launch. And make sure to give yourself a pat in the shoulder as you place that final pumpkin that completes our foundation. And now, we can focus on building the next three columns. Welcome to phase two where we focus on filling in the gaps in our defenses. At this point, we say goodbye to the cattail, not sure why I did not do that earlier, and replace it with the jalapeno. You don't have to use these insta-kills if you don't have to. But I'm still taking them with me anyway, just in case something bad happens while the cob cannons are recharging. Around flag 12, you'd like to do an inspection and replace any defective pumpkins. And you have to make this a priority or else you might lose your umbrella leaf or something. Don't want that. After which, fill in the gaps with your remaining sun. By flag 13, your fire and ice lanes in column 3 should be around 75% complete. Those are still unprotected. By flag 14, you should have a better sense of confidence as you are already complete with column 3. And when I say complete, I mean the fire and ice lanes are upgraded and protected by pumpkins. Things that could slow you down are the unnecessary use of cherry bombs, jalapenos, and if you upgrade pumpkins too frequently. In flag 15, we see Gargantuar in attendance. Oh, and don't forget the imp. Which is the reason why we have to approach building column 4 differently. And by that, I mean anything you plant must be protected by a pumpkin immediately or else that imp will munch away on it. Cause Gargantuar tends to throw them there. Flag 16 is where we upgrade our fire lanes. We did this first because aside from being cheaper than ice lanes, they also tend to give more of a punch. In Flag 17, we take a similar approach with the ice lanes and there's not really much we can do. The good news is, there are no new zombies. Or at least not yet. In Flag 18, we continue building our ice lanes. And, I cannot say this enough, 
proactively replace any defective pumpkins. You can have another big sigh of relief by flag 19 since you would have already completed column 4. And if you're feeling confident like me, go ahead and start building column 5 without pumpkin protection. By flag 20, you would have already filled in the gaps in your defenses. You should have your repeaters ready, pumpkin protected, and for the next round, we're just gonna upgrade them to Gatling P's to finally complete our fire lanes. By flag 21, all hell breaks loose as Giga Gargantuar makes its appearance. But do not fear as we are ready for him. To ensure our victory, we would have to take out the repeater and replace it with the squash, another insta-kill, and keep a very close eye to the zombies on our ice lanes because they're not yet complete. Let us not forget that we're already in phase 3 where we maximize our coverage. Therefore, the best way to do that is to use fume shrooms and do area damage. We temporarily take away the fire and ice lane plants and replace them with the fume shroom set. We could only do one set per flag at this point because of how costly it is. 475 sun to be exact. For flag 23, I had an abundance of sun because of the cob cannon, so thank you. And with that, I was able to complete an entire gloom shroom set and the next best thing, a protected fume shroom set. For Flag 24, of course, I built another Gloom Shroom set and did some pumpkin repairs. I had to do the exact same thing for Flag 25, er, so I thought. Well, if you would notice, one of the Cobb Cannons is still reloading and you will make a very big mistake by continuing the onslaught without waiting for that to reload. Speaking of, come on now. Hmm, anytime. Well, while we're talking about that, you could do a visual inspection of the pumpkins to see if you've made, oh, okay. While nothing new was done for Flag 26, it is satisfying to slowly see the pool getting filled with area damagers. I mean, look at that. The best that I could produce during Flag 27 was a fume shroom set, which is not bad. Flag 28 is when I deviated from the original design. See, next to the torchwoods are supposed to be gold magnets. I don't mind picking up coins when most of the setup is on autopilot. But more importantly, those two slots could be filled by something more useful. But what? Well, since they're on an ice lane, I can't think of a better plant than the winter melon, of course. My fire lane would have four gatling peas, and my ice lane would have four winter melons. Balance. Flag 29 was all about general pumpkin repair and maintenance. Here you go, little guy. During Flag 30, I managed to complete 
an ice lane. Perhaps the biggest sigh of relief in the game and in the editing of this video was made in Flag 31 when the setup was finally completed. I slowly have to swap out a melon with an insta-kill, but other than that, it's complete. And there you are everyone, the fire and ice strategy built over the course of 31 flags. Whew, that is strong. If you like this video, Give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you're interested in seeing more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you're always updated whenever I upload new content. Thanks for watching and have a great day.